Okay, everyone. So for this week, obviously we have CPI and FOMC. So we're going to be focused on just the stocks you guys put in the Discord chat. There was only, I think, nine or 10, and I kept uh, Microsoft and Netflix on the list just because those are the two that we tend to go through every single week, and those just weren't brought up this time. And just like always, I'm going to save the S&P or SPY for last just so we can end on the overall market sediment since that's like the main index and or stock, if you want to call it that way, that people actually watch throughout the day. But we're going to go ahead and just start with Apple to start off. And just like always, as I explain this, since it's basically the same stocks every week and you're starting to see the formations just from the previous five trading days, obviously last week it was just four trading days. Uh, if you guys do have any questions or like you want to hear a different perspective, just let me know. But I'm just going to keep talking through this like I have been the past few times. So we're going to start with Apple. And just like usual, I'm still focused on the daily trend, which we did reject the trend line. And we had the pullback to the support I was telling you guys about, the 162.14 area. That support zone did hold, and we pushed back up on Thursday. I will take this down to the two hour just so we can get a better look of how that all happened. But I was telling you guys, uh, let me highlight the Friday before this past week started. So this was the Monday that we started at, and I was telling you guys how the main resistance reject I'd be watching is like that 166 a share. And then also if I go back to the daily time frame, it kind of correlates with this falling trend for the lower highs. But we had a push on Tuesday, well, basically after hours Monday with Apple that broke above that 166 a share level. And then of course, Tuesday, we didn't have any push at open. We kind of just started to fall down at that point. And obviously going into Thursday, we had the gap down and then we had that support, uh, the support contest at the 162 zone area for a bounce. And obviously we did hold that on Tuesday, well not Tuesday, on a Thursday or Wednesday. I keep thinking, forgetting market was closed Friday. We had that pullback on Wednesday where we basically, we wick below, which I tell you guys all the time. I like to watch the 15, the 30 minute mostly because you can catch the wicks and not get faked out with a five minute candle or a 10 minute candle or even a one or two minute candle. The 30 minutes showed that we broke below that 162 support and obviously we pushed right back up. And the very next day on Thursday, we held that support at open and obviously we pushed up about two bucks per share at a high almost $3 a share. <clears throat> so the zones I had planned out for us this past charting week on Sunday did work out like I expected. Obviously, I don't watch Apple, so I don't, I don't have any trades to back up my actual like words of what I was watching and told you guys to watch for. But if you guys did play this, this uh, resistance reject played out. Obviously, it gapped up after hours and end of the day on Monday, basically. We pushed up right open, got close to that 166 a share reject, pulled back, and then we basically held the pre-market high and then bounced off that, ran past the 166 a share. And then obviously the gap up in the Tuesday, which we fell down, no buying pressure, mostly just consolidation with a slow uh, gap down. And then Wednesday and Thursday was the actual support trend at the 162 a share zone that I talked about. And I'm going to, I don't think I've actually broken down how I would play this or what I actually do when I put these two main zones. Cause I told you guys the resistance was going to be the 166 a share and the support would have been the 162 zone area, 162.20. 162 even just whatever zone area that's never a pinpoint with zones or a level it's always just like the area you want to focus on so you understand or comprehend that when the shares get to that price there's going to be a reaction to that with whether it's buyers or sellers depending on resistance or support so if i would have missed the put side which obviously on tuesday after the monday gap up uh pre-market it's kind of hard to really determine, should I play put, should I play call? So if I was in that actual standpoint on Tuesday watching Apple, knowing it's above 166 a share at open, knowing that there's, like, it's not going up, it's just slowly working down, I would not play anything on that due to the fact that there is no actual movement on this day. Like, obviously, we, we pulled back, pushed back up, pulled down. It was just up, down, chop, basically, the, the whole bing bong effect. 
So after I quote unquote missed the put play for the rejection of the 166, or it doesn't hold 166 after breaking above the resistance, now it's going to act as a support zone. It didn't hold with buying pressure going into Wednesday. So at that point, I would be focused on the call side if we dip down to my support level I had at the 162 a share area. A lot of people are going to say, like, why don't you play puts at open? Looking at it, puts is obviously the best off open play. But in the moment, when you're only looking at market open, you don't really know what's going to happen with the effects of this. It, it could push back up the pre-market high. It could push back up to the low uh, the day before and use that as a rejection to push back downside. So I never really play open for that kind of reason, because at any point, if buyers come in off the not even tape, but just buyers come in buying pressure, shorts are covering. Obviously, the stock is going to go up in price and you can't really determine that off of open when there's no zone from the previous day in sight going off open with Apple on that uh, Wednesday. The day before, there's no levels, really. I mean, there's nothing in this entire zone right here. And if you bring that over to that Wednesday, obviously, that's the only area at open that we had movement. We had buys, sells, the candles, honestly. So I would be waiting if I was watching Apple. I would just wait to see if we dip. Obviously, the whole market had a pullback on Wednesday. That was the main thing I would look for. Because if I missed the initial play with uh, like the puts at the top, I'm not going to force the position going into Wednesday open just because, oh, we gap down pre-market, we're pulling down. I just want to get puts. There is no logical reasoning behind why you're buying them. Obviously, it's the fact that well, we, we didn't break above the 166 and hold the support once we broke above that resistance. You don't want to assume or just hope for a play to work out. So I always look for the second choice, which obviously you missed the puts at the top. We have to come back down. So I'm going to play calls if we touch the 162 share uh, price action zone. That is how I usually work through this kind of stuff. It's all about just patience and waiting. And for the ones that may not know why I have that 162 a share uh, support zone, I'll go to the four hour real quick. I mean, maybe it's the daily. So here on the daily, I was telling people the other uh, this past week, when you're looking at zones, you want to focus on where majority of the touches are. And obviously, this was just one candle, but this was the previous high before the actual breakout happened with Apple, if that makes sense. If we go down to the actual 15 minute and scroll back a little bit, we can actually see how that candle worked out. It wasn't just like a random wick on the 30 minute came back down. Like we actually had a huge push and then rejecting came back down. So I put a zone based off this one wick. And at that point, that's when I go to the four hour or the daily. And I'll work my way back with that 162 a share area. And I'm going to delete this line below so it's not distracting. So the only red line up here right now is basically the support bounce we had Wednesday and Thursday this past week. And then using that, I'm going back to find historical reasoning as to why or how this 162 a share was in effect already. So we acted as support, had a rejection for resistance a few times. When it did break above here, it pulled back. I'm not going to talk too in depth with this because I've basically gone over this almost every week, but I still want to re-alliterate this off the first stock we're looking at because then when I go through the rest of these, I can kind of just talk about the zones see what I'm looking at moving forward this week with the new stocks uh, that people listed, which was Mara, Hut, and Riot. So we'll see how those all work out as well since we've never charted those before. But just like I said earlier, the 162 a share price, historically was there a reasoning why that one wick uh, two weeks ago had that effect? This wick right here. So I'm always trying to find historical reasoning. I need more than just one. Like If this was the only wick and zone that rejected the stock, I would not keep that line there. But when we go back, we can see it in effect on certain spots. When we broke above here, it acted as support. Try to break above this as resistance failed a few times. Once it finally broke up, now the resistance flips the support. Now it holds up. When it broke back down the support, now it acts as a resistance. Try to break back up, failed, came back down. Had a huge push above, obviously, but the very next day came right back through. So that area, it's not a dead point 162.14. It's just the idea, have a line there, understand what it means. Historically, that price has had rejections or supports. So you have to use that in the current times. And obviously, now looking at it, 
you can see it worked pretty good so far. We had a double bottom Wednesday and Thursday. Thursday open could have been a, a huge play for call since it was zero DTE. But that's basically how I use. I literally make two zones, one support, one resistance. Maybe I'll do two supports, two uh, resistance. But I don't have lines all over my chart. It's too distracting. It's too much mental work to remember what each one means, like which one's more heavy than the other, which one is historically held more based off contests. I try and keep it simple, and that makes me wait longer. The less lines, the less confusion. You're not sitting there watching every little 30 cent uh, price per share push, and then, oh, this line just touched. Oh, this line just touched. You wait for the lines to form, like you wait for the lines that get touched, consolidate, candles form, bounce off, reject, fail under. Let the chart come to you. Don't force plays, don't force anything. That's why I chart the way I do. And it works out very well because I trade less and my hit rate is higher because I only play quality setups. I'm not forcing trades because I'm bored, because I need a play, nothing else is working out. I just wait, that's all I do. So now we're going over to AMD and just like Apple and everything else I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a highlight for where um, Friday was. Actually, let's, start, let's do start of the week, so Monday. So this highlight was where Monday was. <clears throat> Obviously, when I was talking to you guys, I kept the same two zones of the 97 and the 99. Since we were below, both of these are acting as resistance. And sure enough, the 97.3 area that I had, well, 97.5, 97, 97.8, anywhere in that zone, I had a level. On Tuesday, we had that contest. We didn't touch it dead on. But this is why I always talk about you don't need a pinpoint exact price action zone you don't need an exact to the decimal you just want to have an idea so hypothetically someone could have charted this a little bit lower someone could have put this a little bit higher the whole idea is for you to understand anywhere in this area within 40 cents a share a dollar a share whatever it is based off the chart that you're using because some move faster than others some are more volatile this rejection on tuesday would have been a solid light size with puts the reason I say light is because it didn't actually touch what I personally had at 97 point whatever. It was barely below. I sized light in that, in, in that instant only because if you are right, you will make good money based off the reaction to that zone. And sure enough, going into Wednesday, AMD was down $5 a share from that uh, resistance reject, quote unquote rejects if you didn't touch exactly, but to the low on the next day, it was basically a five to six dollar drop. These contracts, I don't know what they did, the zero DTE or even the next week of, but just knowing a 97 uh, price per share stock dropped six bucks, basically five bucks. That's a big drop. That's like six, seven percent right there alone already. So that's the main thing that I'm focused on are these heavy zones. I size light when the contest happens. I don't size a regular position only because I didn't have enough confirmation. This is like an open play. If we go to the five minute, obviously it's going to look a lot better. But you're focused on the fact, like when I'm looking at this, pre-market high is important. If pre-market high can't break after, I'd say the first hour or so, you want to start looking at, okay, is there buying pressure? Is the volume heavy? Is it light compared to previous opens? Because if the, if the volume's not there, and you're not seeing any confirmation of a breakout, more than likely it's gonna zone or it's gonna slowly fade off. And sure enough, that's what AMD did, it slowly faded off and it continued into the following day. So when I size light, I'm not focused on buying one contract and selling up 20% or 30%. I'm sizing light because I'm looking at the bigger move on the 30 minute or the 15 minute. And when we switch to that, you can see every time that we've been at this zone, historically, Obviously, we wick above, pull back, wick above, pull back. There's always at least a four to five price per share move up or down when it rejects, when it bounces. So you have to look at the historicals with this kind of stuff. When I play stocks that I know, like Netflix, it doesn't just move $4 in a day. It doesn't just move $6 in a day. I have seen Netflix push 10%, 15% in a day off of a heavy zone historically that has rejected or bounced massively. So looking at AMD just in the past month time frame on the 30 minute, every time this zone has contested or rejected, not just consolidated at it, because if you look at it, 
a few times it like holds and doesn't do much. There's not a big move because it pushes up a little bit, comes back down, pushes back up. You're always focused on the two to three days after. AMD had that effect. It's, it wasn't just going to hold here where my uh, cursor is into Wednesday, into Thursday. It's either going to push up or it's going to drop massive. There's no in-between going off how it moves based off that zone. That's why I size light. If my original position is usually a $1,000 position, I'm going to size in 50 bucks to 100 Because that way, if I lose the whole amount, I'm not emotional. I'm relaxed. But playing the chart, this move would have paid off. Obviously, looking at it now, it looks good. But if you go back to just the day of right here, you can't see the effect of what actually happened. But just going off that zone, reject. I mean, just the drop right here. It was in one day and pulled back, obviously. But this one day right here, it went from 97 a share down to 93. That's a $4 move in one day. I mean, that's pretty massive in my opinion, especially when you play contracts. So that's how I play by, like the light size of things. When a zone contests, I'll always focus on, okay, I can start a position here. Maybe I'll add one to two week time on it, or I'll play zero DTE and just not add to the position. Because if you are correct when you size light, the way I tell people about this, if you size in like my quote unquote normal position would be $1,000. If I sell that at 20%, I just made 200 bucks. If you buy one contract for a hundred bucks and it goes 300%, you just pocketed $300 based off the other position being a thousand bucks selling at 20%. You're focused on the bigger move. So you size light and you hold. Obviously it's all personal opinion. You can sell whenever, but that's how I like to chart these and then play them going off those zones when it rejects or it bounces. So just going off the rest of this week for AMD, obviously I feel like we're going to push into FOMC and the CPI data. But the main thing I look at just going off the past month, this zone right here is going to be heavy for a reject or if we reclaim that with futures gapping up overnight possibly. Watch that $93 a share area. Whether you want it for support or resistance, if the stock opens up above $93 a share, use that zone for support, obviously. If we open below 93 a share, use that zone as resistance. It doesn't matter where the stock is, this is going to be a zone because we bounced off it previously. And finally, we actually broke through on the downside. And I'm going to make this line purple because usually I try and color coordinate, even though it doesn't matter. Purple and white, I keep for indecisive. Like it's in the mix of everything. It can be support or resistance. Obviously, the ones above now, I'm going to make these all yellow or orange because those are only res uh, resistance at this point. But you want to focus on 93 a share, no matter what happens, gap up, gap down, that's going to play a part in something. And if you're a big person on patterns, we have an inverse cup and handle forming right here. We have the cup forming. I have too many highlights. Give me a second. We have the cup forming right here, the inverse cup. The handle is starting to form. If the pattern plays out the way it usually does, we'll have a little bit of a rising wedge here, and we're going to reject it. It probably will go above 93 a share, but just going off the pattern, that 93 a share is going to reject and it's going to keep coming down. So the only zone is the 93. If you want another resistance above the 93, anywhere around this area. Now we got a lot of lines, so I got to delete a few up here. 95 area a share. Obviously, the reason I did that, we had a nice uh, support. You can move this down a little bit if you want to. It's like I told you, it's not a dead point to the decimal. It's just all about knowing the area within $94.90 a share to $95.40 a share. There's going to be a rejection because obviously the price currently is below that $95 a share zone. So we had a nice support hold. We pulled back it open here. We didn't touch it, but we had buying pressure to push it back up. And then obviously back here, we wick below and came up. And that's where that $93 a share also comes in as a support zone. If the price opens up below 93 a share, it's going to act as resistance. So now that I just did that, I'm going to go to the four hour just for my personal clarification, see what these two lines I just put in, if there's any historical reasoning behind them. Those are all in the current time frames right now, it looks like. I mean, we had nice consolidation right here. We broke above, pulled right back down, but there's no actual dead point. 95 a share right here held for two days, basically a double bottom, but it's not very concise like it is on the smaller frames with the past month that's been going on. 
So just going off the 30 minute or the 15 minute candles, those are the two main zones that I'd be focused on. 93 a share and around 95 a share for AMD. So now going to Amazon, I do want to pull up the daily because I've been doing this for, I don't know how many months waiting for this contest to happen again. I still feel Amazon's going to have this contest right here. I'm not sure how anyone else feels about that, but I honestly think we're going to keep gapping up on Amazon. 107 a share, 108 a share, I do see as a target, but it's not guaranteed. It's just a personal biased opinion that I see going off the chart if the falling wedge rejection does hit on this trend line. So now switching to the two hour. The last two levels I had on Amazon, and I'm going to highlight uh, Monday just so you guys know where the week started at last week. So I was telling you guys how we had 103 a share was, a, I mean, 104 a share was going to be up there. I made I kept it white because it wasn't a guarantee if we were going to touch that high. Obviously, we rejected not at 104 a share, but in that zone, there was selling pressure. Sure enough, we dropped down and we bounced off the $100 a share area. $100.65 is what I have this actual level at. So just going off these zones, just like I was talking about with Apple, you guys should be able to tell at this point why $100, I had a zone there. We had a few rejects right here. We have more rejects here. Now that we finally are broken above this zone of $100 a share, Amazon has held it every time it tries to contest on the downside. So if we can hold $100 a share on Amazon this week, we may have a pullback, we may gap up. This is gonna hold trends if we don't break that $100 a share. And what I mean by trends is this right here. Since we just formed this higher low in this area right here, Amazon is now holding a rising trend, higher lows on the two hour right now. We just broke out and we're holding. So we're overall pushing on Amazon. Are we gonna fill the gap to the upside? I personally think we're going to, but we need more pressure on the upside. We need 104 a share to break. We gotta get a higher high foreman to fill out this trend. So we got enough room to go. The question is how high is Amazon actually gonna push to? The main support zone I would be watching is obviously the $100 share area. It can be anywhere from $99.80 to $100.50 a share. You just want that zone charted. That's the main aspect of all this. You want that zone in there so you understand when you're on the five minute or the 15 minute, you don't have to zoom back or scroll back to see why you have that there. The zone's there. Obviously, on the 30 minute, we have this trend as well. So we have two positive reasonings for support as to why Amazon should hold and continue to go higher. If we hold the trend, we can wick below like we did back here on the, on the rising trend. It's okay to wick. Just don't get scared or buy with anticipation of it's going to come back up. This is a timely play. Amazon slowly works its way up. The buying pressure is there. Higher lows are forming. Higher highs are forming. Can we hold 100 in a share this week? That is the main thing I'd be focused on for Amazon. If we do hold 100 a share, can we break the rejection of that $104 a share? Those are the two main zones I see for Amazon. So, HUT, I do know what this is because I used to trade it back in like 2018, 2019, but I have not looked at this in a while. So, I have to go to the daily and the weekly, just get a feel for this and see. And obviously, we're basically at consolidating at all-time lows not all-time lows but like you know the zone of the lows on the weekly so i'm going to go back to the daily just get a feel for it i'm not going to put any lines on this yet because i just want to look at the chart and just see if i notice anything heavy the main thing i see which everyone should get the idea anywhere in this area we had support zone holds right here we had a rejection here and we tried to hold now we're kind of in the mix of everything we're kind of holding in the dead center so this uh share price the one dollar and 76 cents basically anywhere in this area there's going to be a reject obviously since the price for hut is currently underneath this zone so i'm just going to leave this here and i'm going to make it purple just because it's indecisive i'm going to go to the four hour and see if i can find a more pinpoint with pre-market and after hours that will correlate better and obviously, for me, I see stuff pretty quick, but we have a nice support zone right here. 
the reason I put that there, we had buying pressure, buying pressure, and obviously, will this hold tomorrow? We're currently at that buying pressure zone for HUT for the third time, basically. We wick, we uh, drop below right here, which that would have been a nice dip by opportunity, obviously, now looking back. But in the moment, people would have thought, oh, it's coming down. It's not, it's not going to go back up. Buyers kept it up, and within a week, it was already back up where it lost all the momentum going into that weak drop. So the main thing that I see, I have the rejection around the 1.78 a share. I'm also going to put one. I, I just want to align for a zone. I'm not doing this as a pinpoint right now to leave it there. I just want to have guidance when I go back on the larger frames. I'm going to go back to the daily. I'm going to go back a year, two years, or three years to see if this area of $1.60 a share correlates to anything historically. And I'll make this red. So now at this point, I go back to the daily, and I just come back to these areas right here. This is what I'm focused on. I don't care about right now. I was just telling you guys, when we're looking at the, the chart right now, we're in a huge chop consolidation area. So I need to see historically, do these two zones I just uh, put up with the chart, do they have any resemblance historically? And sure enough, there's basically a double top that happened back in mid-2020. It's not right at hundred. I mean, one dollar and sixty cents a share, but it's in the area. Like I always tell you guys about. You want to have a zone just for your memory. You want to know historically. Okay, this is heavy. Whether it's red, you make it blue, purple, whatever it is. You want to know this is going to be a heavy zone because when we're looking at it from this perspective right here, it basically took hut. We had a huge push right here. I'm not sure why this happened, but from a dollar twenty, it ran almost three bucks within four or five days. Before that breakout happened, once we broke below this zone, it basically took a whole year to break out of this resistance that kept rejecting. So now using this in the current times, I'm going to the one hour. We are holding that historical rejection zone as support now. Does that make sense? That's a huge thing to focus on. Historically, this zone was a rejection. Now that the stock is above and holding with buying pressure, it's a major support at this point. If we can hold above, basically the zone is $1.60 a share. This could have a push back up to the rejection, which it's only a 20 cent push up to 180 a share, basically $1.80. Those are the two main zones. And obviously at that point, if it breaks out of the $1.80 area, you're going to focus on the higher, the previous higher high, which is going to be roughly $2 a share, basically. This is a very cheap stock. It's basically a penny stock. It has something to do with crypto because it is a mining stock. The question would be, though, can it hold the support that historically was a rejection? If it can hold $1.60 a share, this may zone for a bit, but the buying pressure could hit out of nowhere, just like it did back here once it finally broke above. So that's the main focal point that I see off of HUTs. And I'm going to go back a little bit more just because I want to see if there's anything else back here. And there's not really. So that $1.60 area is the main support going into this week for the stock. So I'll keep that up. Support, $1.60 area. Resistance is going to be $1.80 area. Roughly those two zones. So now we're on Mara. Mara is also crypto. And as you can see, I used to trade this when it was in the mid-20s. <laughs> There's a lot of lines right there. So just going off the daily, just like with HUT, I want to get a feel for the current time because I have not looked at this, obviously, since the low 20 a share area. <clears throat> so I got to get familiar with the new zones, see what's happening. We had a nice rejection around here, which also acted as support. Now it's a resistance. So around $9.50 is like the main, main rejection. So I'll make that orange. And I don't see many other things in this time frame. So just keeping the $9.50 zone there, I'm going to go back to the previous lows before the high breakout happened and just see if there's anything that correlates, which obviously it looks like there's not going to be. So we had a nice, we had nice rejections right here on it. We can actually lower this a little bit, maybe to like $9 and 20 cents a share, just so historically it matches up with these wicks that happened on the daily kind of held consolidation right here before the break on the downside. 
then it kept rejecting the resistance, not making a higher price action. Then it finally broke out, obviously, and had that massive run the $40 a share, which I do remember this happening because I was trading penny stocks back then. So yeah, I'm going to keep that at $9. I'm on the four hour now. I'm going to try and find a support zone in the current times first, and then I'll go back historically and see if that zone correlates with any price action back then. So I kind of like how this wick right here popped up and we rejected heavy within two days. We're basically down almost, what, a dollar a share, $2 a share. So just for now, I'm going to put a level here at the top of this wick just for correlation issues when I go back. It's not to keep it there. It's not to leave it for good. I just want to use that $7.30 area and see historically if it has any reasoning or if it did anything. And obviously going back, there was a few rejections. We had a nice one there, a few rejections there. After we broke above and hit the $9 uh, rejection, we pulled back underneath the purple, rejected there again. So around that 7.30-ish, 7.25, there is historically rejections almost four of them in this time frame right here for the daily. So now using that, I'm going to go back to where we broke down here. There's not much correlation. There's a lot of on the daily. Obviously, the four hour could look different. The daily was not very pinpointed with the $7 area. So you could also, since we have a nice wick here, and we have two filled candles here and here, also a third one practically where it closed, I can put a level here anywhere in this zone. So I'm going to just for now put it at like 777 and I'll keep this white and I want to go back to the current times again just to see if it has any correlation with something. And sure enough, we had rejection, rejection. Now we're holding support. So those three levels, was that confusing to anyone how I did that or does that make sense a little bit? Like I find stuff in the current times, go back historically to see if it has any resemblance back in 2018, 2019. And if it played a part back then, as it is right now, those levels are in the algo for shares to be bought or sold when it contests or when it uh, rejects, if that makes sense. Levels historically are always going to come back. I don't know if anyone really has talked to you guys about that or brought it up to your attention. A level back in... 2005 on Tesla, well, not Tesla, but like Amazon before the splits, obviously, these levels are going to correlate in the current times when they align, if that makes sense. Everything historically comes back. It's not just like uh, Amazon $100 a share, say they don't have any splits and their price stays this area for the next two years. These same zones on Amazon will be the exact same rejection support, just like it is now, years down the road. Everything follows suit. It's never just a one and done and then the level doesn't matter anymore. So just going off the Mara historical, these three all had resemblance now and also historically off the zone, not a pinpoint 7.77. It's the rough area of it. That's the main thing to focus on. So I'm going to make this white one red. I'm going to keep the purple. I'm going to make that white only because it's kind of out of the way. We have to break through the $7.77 area before we even can test that next support level on the bottom. So these are the only main three that I do see with Mara. If you want to go off the, let's go two hour. You can put a level here for a rejection only because we rejected right here. We had a almost rejection. It's, it's the zone area that rejected, obviously, not the pinpoint that I put at 8.65. We had a rejection here, and now we're kind of wicking up and pulling back with the rejection on that side. So with Mara, you can have four levels like what I have right now or more, whatever you feel is comfortable, whatever makes you remember why you put them there. For me, all I honestly see, and this is all biased, obviously, I haven't traded it in a while. I don't know how it moves anymore. I only have a support zone. The main support is going to be $7.77. It can be anywhere from $7.65 up to $7.80. That zone is going, to be a, is going to be a support. Below that support is the second level, which is going to be about $7.30 a share. Going off the rejections for the resistance, $8.60 a share to $8.75 a share. 
anywhere in that zone is going to be the first reject with the consolidation that we're in. If we break above that, obviously it's going to be around $9.20 a share, anywhere from $9 to $9.30 a share. That's going to be another zone. So those are the main four I see for Mara. And if you're looking at this, let's go to the 30 minute right here. Just going off this consolidation, you can easily see why I put even just the closest to support and resistance. We had a lot of hold right here. When we broke below, we pulled right back up and held. And obviously the rejections, you can see almost this whole time when we haven't wicked above, this is where we've rejected. So we're in a zone on Mara right now. The only question is if it breaks out or breaks down, up or downside, will it have momentum to carry it in that direction or will it just fake out and pull back inside? That's what you have to watch for because it has had fake outs. If the market does get hot and crypto stays hot, this could run and push and break $9, break $9.50 and make its way up to a breakout level. So these are the famous, uh, main four levels that I see on Mara. All personal biased, obviously. So the next stock I have up is Meta. We've, we didn't chart Meta last week, but we did chart the week before. So I kept those levels up. And obviously, we broke out of the cup and handle. We're filling the gap on the upside. And we're holding and buyers are just fluttering in. So the levels that we have to use at this point, which none of these matter. So I'll delete these. I'm on the four hour. And I'm just going to pull back. Well, first, let's do this. So usually when I don't have levels, like if I'm on the daily right now, you have to go back to basically mid last year, May of last year. I'll just go to the four hour. I'll put a level at the previous high. I'll put a level at a support zone, which was the low on the day on Thursday. I'll color coordinate these. So I'll make this red. I'll make the top uh, yellow. Then I'll go to the daily. Now I'll go back and start to look for stuff. In the current times, I mapped out the high and the low. Now I'm just trying to see if there's any correlation with these kind of things. And obviously, I'm going to go to the four hours because the daily, I can't see pre-market or after hours. It's going to be a little bit easier for me to see. So we had a few rejections right here. Once we broke below, we try to push back up and the $217 share area rejected. Before we broke above that 217 share, we did reject and pull back and bounced off that 209 area. So those two zones, just in this time frame, it has two to three correlations off support or resistance for those. So at this point for me, I want to go back farther now, not just the past year or two years. I want to go back to 2020, 2019, 2018 and see where else this has happened. So we had a reject here, obviously gap down because of earnings. We had a daily reject around 209. So we're seeing a few correlations with one on each right now. Before another gap down, we had a wick and push back. Earnings gap down, we tried to break above and failed a few times. After we broke above 216 a share, we pulled back and held support on the daily at 209. The day before that, we tried to hold 217, 216 area as well. So just going off that, the zones had correlation. It wasn't as heavy as like Mara was or uh, any other stock that may have had four or five or six correlations, but there's enough evidence here, especially this kind of thing right here. A stock that breaks out after consolidating and rejects in one day and pulls right back down, that specific price per share on Meta was there for a reason. <clears throat> that reject happened because a heavy seller hit. There wasn't enough buyers that hit. So just going on, we can move this down to 208.50, keep it at 209. This is when you have to readjust for your liking. For me, I just want them there for the zones and the ideal look for them. Going off this area right here, we can actually put a line right there around 222 a share, 223 a share on Meta. And I'll make that orange. So we rejected there at the 220, 222, 223. Once we broke above, that held support for almost two weeks straight. So I just found a new resistance now for the current times. Remember, I put the 216, 217 a share line there because that was the high in the past few days on Meta. We need a level above that now. 
going back to 2020, we see a few correlations with that 222, 223 a share area. So now at this point, I want to go back to the current times and see, okay, does that 223 area have a rejection or a support that happened previously? And just going off this, we had a nice reject right here. We had a few rejects after pulling back inside the consolidation. We tried to break back above 223, couldn't do it, drop down. So that 223 is also going to be a rejection zone. You can move it up to 224, 225, anywhere in this area you want to have it there. I'm going to keep mine around 223 just for the whole number issue. So now at this point, I go back to the 30 minute, look at the current times for Meta. And obviously we have the main rejection that I put for the high, basically the 216. Above that is a gap to 223. You can find levels in between. That's fine. I don't want to get into too much detail with that. I'm just doing the overall, like what I look for. If Meta has a pullback to the 209 area, and obviously if you want to add another level, people will say like, oh, well, this is also a level at 212. I get that. I look for the safest alternative. There's always been support levels or rejection or uh, resistance levels. You put two of them back to back like this, you'll enter off this first zone thinking it's going to bounce there and it crashes straight through. You'll sell your position early. You'll be red because you size too heavy. You're emotional. You just want to get out of it. It holds this support, the main support that I see, the 209 area, and it bounces right back up to where you basically bought the position at. I always wait for the lowest risk and the highest reward. If it never happens, that's why you look at another stock. You don't have to force trades. You don't have to force a setup. Let it come to you. The only three zones I see, the main support, which I had before this even started, the 209, and obviously the high on Thursday, this is going to be basically the main rejection in the past, what is it, three, four months since we've been pushing up practically. So we have the 216, and above the 216, I see a 223 gap fill. And if tech stays hot, communication stocks stay hot, Google's already pushing, Microsoft may keep pushing, Meta's going to follow suit. So you want to focus on those overalls. I would be looking personally for a bounce off the 209, 210 area. It's a safe buy-in right there for Kohl's. If you want to buy the breakout above 217 and then it pulls back and holds that as support, you can buy calls on the breakout and recontest of that level. Play it smart and play for your account size. Just don't throw money in just because, oh, the gap fills 223 because Breezy said it. Don't worry about the gap fills. Focus on the execution on the play. Let the chart form the rest. Let the chart do the work. So now going off Microsoft, we basically had three, three rejections where we're at right now for resistance. We're currently trying to break out. Thursday was a huge day for Microsoft, which I wish I would have played that for zero DTE, but I was not watching it. So I'm just going to, first of all, just slide back to this time. I'm going to move this level up to 292 a share, anywhere in that zone, 292.50, 291.70. You just want to line there because we've had three days back to back historically that rejected. And currently with the times that we're in for Microsoft, we're literally right at that zone of the 293 a share. So just going off the previous three-day reject to pull it back down, that's where we're sitting in current times. That's the first main, main rejections where we basically closed on Thursday. So just going off that, now I'm going to move back and try and find a next level rejection that we may want to chart just for like a gap fill that may happen. We basically had a triple top right here, along with rejections moving forward. Let me change these colors. I'll make this orange. I'll make the top one yellow. So we have basically $301 a share is the next gap fill I see after, after and or if we break and hold 292 a share, 293 a share. We have $300 a share. If you want the next level after 300, it's going to be roughly 308, 309 a share. This is how I chart. I don't do the whole... 292 a share, 295, 297. I'm focused on the main moves because it makes me hold more. I play the chart. I don't play emotions. If I'm up a good percent, I'll sell. I'm focused on the bigger move and I size light for that move. 
I mean, literally just off the weekly, Microsoft is trying to curl back up to all-time highs right now. So there's no reason to chase this either. Don't chase a breakout in case it doesn't continue. Obviously, going off just the two-hour time frame in the past two to three months, it's been on a straight tear upside. We have a few pullbacks, but every pullback is a higher low, and we just rip up the higher highs. I personally would wait for a pullback to buy in calls if you want to, but if we break above 292 a share, 293, and it acts as support, we pull back and hold, you can play that for the upside. The pullback I would see is roughly 282 a share, 283. If you want a little bit of a higher entry point, you can raise up to about 284, 285. We rejected that area roughly right here, had this nice support hold. We broke below that uh, Wednesday and Thursday, but then Thursday it ripped right back up through to that uh, rejection around 292 a share. So mostly what I see on Microsoft, the main, main support I like is obviously the 282 a share. But if you want a little bit of a higher entry on that in case it doesn't dip that low, 284 to 285 a share. Rejection, the first main rejection from the previous three-day wick that basically forced it right back down is about 292 a share, 293 a share. The gap fill I see is roughly $300 a share. So now we're looking at uh, Netflix. I'm not going to speak too much on this because uh, no one listed this to talk about, but it is something I still want to bring up because it's it's basically approaching a major support hold right now to try and break back inside this rising wedge. So on the daily, obviously right now we're rejecting this rising support trend well, uh, resistance trend, once you break back inside, it's going to be acting as support thing. I mean, yeah, as support. So right now, it's just the rejection going off. We held it the previous times. We broke below finally. The last time we broke below, we had a major gap up due to earnings. My thinking with Netflix having earnings coming up, I think we're going to possibly push up slightly to this trend again, roughly about 360 a share, 355 a share. And earnings is going to gap this up to probably 370, 380. That's my personal thinking. It could hit 400. I don't know. But I think Netflix earnings is going to be not unbelievable, but good enough for a gap up and a push. So that's why I'm focused on this support holding first of all, which is roughly 332 a share, 333 a share. This support has to hold based off historically where it's contested that twice and failed. Once it broke above, it didn't even act as support on the way back down. So now we're finally breaking on the upside through that support, well, through the resistance. Now it acts as support when it pulls back. We are currently holding that $333 a share area. If we do bounce off this and push, the gap is gonna be 350. If you want the first rejection area, it's gonna be roughly 344, 345 a share. Let me change this to yellow. So the three main zones on Netflix, I'm going to take away this highlight because it's kind of distracting. So we have that 333 a share, which obviously we held down Thursday and bounced off the open dip. If we push up, we're going to have a reject roughly around 344 a share, 345 a share. The main gap I want to see, whether it's a touch or a breakthrough, is 351 a share. Anywhere from 350 to 351. If that breaks above, at that point, all I see happening is this trend contest, which will be roughly 360 a share, 355 area. If that happens and then earnings is within a few days, I personally would look at calls if you don't catch it tomorrow or Tuesday or Wednesday, if we have a dip on Netflix. That 333 has to hold support and we should make higher highs and higher lows on Netflix at that point moving forward. So now we're going to NVIDIA. It's kind of in the same setup as Microsoft on the weekly. It's just had a massive uptrend, trying to contest all-time highs. The main two zones I kept from last charting, I had the 263, which we actually pulled back on that. From what day was it we had this? On Wednesday, we had the pullback. Monday open, NVIDIA was roughly at... Basically, two, it opened at 275, tapped out the next day at 281. Then we dropped almost $20 a share to hit that support zone that I thought was the best place to wait to get calls moving forward. 
if we can hold that support at 264 a share on NVIDIA, NVIDIA can make higher, uh, higher highs, higher lows. It's going to hold the trends moving forward. Just going off the four hour right here, we got this nice little higher highs going or uh, higher lows going. If we fill the gap with this going off the trends, let me move that up a little bit. Notice how all this correlates. We'll have a nice gap fill at about 285 a share. If we fill this wedge trend, going off the support, going up the resistance. I want to make this orange. So at this point, just like Microsoft, I'm going to say the same exact thing. It should be muscle memory at this point, or at least like a first thought, like I shouldn't do this. Don't just buy calls and hope this keeps going up. If you, if you have the account to risk, if you size light enough that it, if it goes to zero, you're not going to be upset, you can do that. But like I've said before, if you would have chased this breakout for calls, you would have got destroyed. If you just would have sat and said, okay, I'm not going to buy the breakout because what if it doesn't keep going? You could have bought this on Thursday or Friday, uh, Wednesday or Thursday, and swung this in the next week with an expiration for this upcoming Friday or the Friday after. I always wait for the main zones. If it never happens, I don't trade that stock. There's plenty of other stocks you can go to. Don't be stuck on the fact like I haven't traded yet. And the video looks like it's breaking out because on Monday we had that. Let me go to the five minutes so it looks clear. On Monday, Nvidia had a push, pulled back, and then ran into the day. Gapped up overnight, right it open. We started tanking pre-market, dropped right it open. Consolidation dropped into the next day, drop. Coco, man, you and patience, bro. You still got to learn patience. But it's all about just you want to wait for the play. Let the chart come to you. Don't watch the chart and say, I got to catch up to it. Let the play come to you. You're not missing nothing, I promise. When you think you miss a huge play, a better one is coming. You just don't know when. That's why you prepare and you wait for a zone, for a pattern, trends to hold market sentiment, news, reports. You just don't want to force a play because you're bored because you haven't made one yet. The video right here is a perfect example. This trend obviously would not have been there because that was not formed yet. But going off the previous, it would have been somewhere around here. But once that Tuesday happened, you can bring that up now. That support was the main thing I was talking about last Sunday. That support of 263, 264 a share. Sure enough, guess what? Come Wednesday, Thursday, it was roughly right there. It didn't touch it dead on, didn't wick below, but it was in the area compared to buying calls at 280 a share. You could get calls at 265 a share. It's all about waiting. I don't want to give a rejection above 285 because there's not much to really look at, but if you want to focus on anything, just watch 290 a share. 285 is going to be the first rejection. 290 a share will be the next one. Outside of that, support's the only thing I'm watching. 263. If 263 does break, just watch the previous lower high that formed roughly around 260 a share right here. That's one thing to always do. If you're in a trend where this purple trend line is, you're focused on the higher lows. If the next higher low right here breaks, the next support is the previous higher low. That's how trends work. The previous higher low acts as the new support when the, the current support does not hold. So if the second support breaks, you go back to the previous higher low. That's how you work with trends and uh, readjusting as the chart makes its moves. So now I'm going over to Riot. Riot is also crypto, just like Mara. Have not charted this in a while, so I'm going to go to the daily just to get a feel for it. Not much has been going on. So I'm going to try and make this quick. I do want to get to SPY and talk for a few minutes about that. Mar right now, or a riot right now. We had a lot of candles right here. Hard to find a pinpoint. So I'm going to switch to the four hour and move back and see if I can see better with pre market and after hours. So here's another example of how I personally chart. This is obviously wrong, right, interesting, confusing. If you have questions, just ask. I never put a level just at a wick when this is like the only zone. If I go back to the daily, just going off the current, no, oh geez. Just going off the current times. This was the last major contest for a rejection. Before that, we had this consolidation that gap down. I'm focused on just this right here. 
So when I'm focused on that, I go to the four hours so I can see pre-market and after hours. I'm not going to put a level at the top wick. I'm focused on the overall consolidation in this three-day, four-day time period. Where was the actual volatility at? Where were the candles forming and closing at? You don't want to put it way up here because a riot may only touch $9.90 a share. It won't touch $10.50. If you want to put a level there at the top of the wick, you can go for it. But I like to focus on the majority of the candles filling and closing, which for me, that's roughly $9.98, anywhere in this area. We had massive candles forming and closing all throughout this day. And then the very next day, we had a wake up and fail at market open. So I'm focused on majority of the consolidation of the zone, not just, oh, the high in this time frame is $10.52. I don't care about that. I'm focused on the majority of the liquidity, the majority of the candles, the fills, the closes, the opens. I don't care about the wicks. If you want to mark that for an idea, go ahead and just put a line there, make it a color so it's not distracting. Like for me, I like to keep it in white when I'm like indecisive. For something that's major, obviously this will be a, because Mara, our riot was at 9.11. So this will be 9.99. This will be a resistance. I'll make that orange. Now I go back to that consolidation that happened. See, if I were to put that at 10.52, this white is in no man's land. That 9.99, 9.95, we held support. We had a wick, but it pulled back. We tried to hold with wicks here. The next day we tried to break back above and we failed. The 9.99 area has more relevance than the 10.52, 10.50 area. That's why I always go for the majority candles because it looks and works better. In my own background with doing this for as long as I have been, that works best for me. And sure enough, we held support there, had a rejection there. So we have a solid level at 9.99, anywhere between 9.90 and $10 a share. So now I go back to current times on the one hour. And we're basically at that point for a rejection, around $10 a share. Now we need a support. The way I do support, I'll go back to the four hour. I look at the current times. Where can I see something forming? So obviously we had nice support right here, which that was the Thursday, obviously. We had a nice rejection here before we made a higher high. So I try and use anything I can find. This zone in this area is going to be heavy between $8.60 to $8.90. That zone will be heavy. So just for visual perspective, I leave a line there. And now I go back and see is anywhere from 670 to 690, 660 to 690. Is there a correlation historically with that level? So here's a rejection right here. I don't want to say this is a rejection because we had a few days back to back of wicks and candles and fills. But once we broke above and pulled back, we tried to push back up that next day and we failed. So using this, I don't want to put a pinpoint 8.75. I don't care about the point, whatever. I just want the zone. So anywhere from like I was saying earlier, 860 to 880, 890, anywhere in this area, I want to have a level. So I'm going to go with like 870 ish going off mostly this right here. But I am going to lower it though, because I don't like those wicks. So I'll go roughly like 860, 865. It's a guess. It's not, this is the level you have to put this to the decimal. I have this as a zone. I'm not focused on the pinpoint. I just want this. So I remember when I went back, that level was big. Because sure enough, if you go down just a little bit more, there you go, there you go. Around 840, we had a few rejects right here, $8.40. But I'm going to keep it at the 860, 870. So when I go back to the 30 minute in the current times, now I have two major zones basically. I got the 9.99 and the 8.60. If you want to use the Thursday low, go for it. I don't like using just one day. That one point on Thursday, that's the low. That's the main focal point. I get that. You can wick below and pull right back up. So I like to keep the overall perspective, the main zones. These are the only two main zones I see. I don't trade right a lot, if ever. I don't chart it that much. So this is going off what I just saw for the first time in three years on this chart. Six point, I mean, 8.60 for support. 
Resistance is going to be about 9.99. If we break $10 a share and push up, the 10.50 a share is going to be the next one, $10.50. So now we're looking at Tesla. I'm going to go to the daily first. Obviously, everyone knows what Tesla's been doing. We rejected the past few days. Didn't have as much of a push on Tesla like we did Microsoft and NVIDIA and everything else. So Tesla's kind of in a zone right now. The rejection I had, the 200, it kind of didn't contest at all, so we fell down lower. At this point, I'm just looking for, I mean, anything with correlation. If you can see this, I kind of like how we had a double bottom right here before pushing up higher. So I'm gonna keep a level at 176 and just see historically if that correlates with anything major, which we had a few consolidation. We acted as support right here, broke below, pulled back up, held for a few days. There's not very, like, there's not enough confirmation for me to keep it right there though. So I'm gonna keep going back farther, see if I find anything. We had a nice double bottom right here. Which I think that may have been one of the levels I just took away on Tesla. It's around 182 if we go off the wick on this one. So I'm going to make this purple just so I know. Some stuff is not going to be easy to chart. And some stuff, there may not be anything to chart. You just have to watch it on Monday and Tuesday and find stuff as it forms. Tesla has been consolidating and just up, down, up, down momentum. So there's not much I personally can see or do with this. If you want to focus on a rejection point, you can use this zone right here. As you can tell, it basically acted as support and resistance both ways. We had nice rejections right there, had a nice support right there, had another nice support. I just made it smaller. Had another nice support right here. Now it's rejecting this on the downside. So if you want to keep this 185 a share zone, that is perfectly fine. The only thing you have to remember, if we break above 185, it could pull back and act as support and hold 185 before it pushes for higher highs and higher lows. So just going off, and there's not much for me to chart on Tesla. We're kind of in the zone right now. It's not safe to trade, in my opinion, until we actually break out upside or downside. We have a heavy zone where it's currently at at 185 a share. A break above 185 and a pullback as support to hold this level would be important for calls. We also have a support at 182 a share. And then the main support I see is the 176. So if Tesla would drop the 176 area, I personally would start watching it to see if we can hold that level to push back up for calls. So those are the main two levels that I see. Well, main three levels, I would say, for Tesla that I see. Outside of this, it's not very... I worthy, I would say, from my perspective, I don't trade Tesla really, but that's just what I see based off the chart compared to what else we've looked at. Amazon looks good. Microsoft and NVIDIA look good if they can continue momentum. Meta looks good. There's better stocks out there, in my opinion. But if you like Tesla, do what you got to do. Just don't rush anything. Okay, now for the last one, uh, SPY. We'll start on the daily, even though we all know what's been going on. So we're basically holding above the 404 I was talking about last week. That was like the main dip I wanted for calls on SPY to go like a week or so out expo. The main rejection, which I actually ended up touching, was roughly 413 a share. And that was on Tuesday open when we basically touched that. So the rejection I had for the put side was close, but not dead on. It's the zone. You're not focused on the exact pinpoint, but that zone did reject. And we dropped almost basically seven to eight points from the high to the low in that one week span. So just going off the trends, we're back inside the wedge, trying to break back on the upside. Obviously, the buying pressure did hit. I have too many lines. I got to lose some of these. The main thing that I'd be focused on for SPY Obviously, we have CPI, FOMC. It's going to be a volatile week. I don't expect a lot of volume to hit the market tomorrow and Tuesday, but historically, SPY usually runs into FOMC and CPI. Light volume, uptrends all day. I'm not saying buy calls and hold. I'm just saying what usually happens. 
Are we going to drop after the results? I don't know. Are we going to push after the results? I don't know. That's where charts come into play. All I honestly see is a support, which I just had this 404 area. If we pull back, that's going to be a nice spot for calls if we can hold. Outside of that, the same top reject we had at 413. The main zones, 413 reject, 404 support. Outside of that, it's not... I mean, there's not much you can really talk about or do. Like, we've literally had the same issue back in early February to the end of February before we broke on the downside. We just were chopping up, down, up, down, up, down. We're basically in the same boat now after having this massive run up, low volume basically this whole way up. What's going to happen at this point? We have CPI and FOMC to give us that direction. I don't see us breaking out upside or downside before Wednesday. Could we run into the zones until Wednesday? We could, but I don't want to say what I wish would happen because I try and just play the charts, even though I do feel like we will slightly push into the FOMC and the CPI. Does anyone have any thoughts about the market this week? Any questions, what we talked about? So anything you guys may have, go ahead and drop it in the Zoom chat if you want to. What do you think about chip stocks? Um, so, I mean, as everyone should know, I try not to speak on bias and I try and be as real and honest as possible. I don't trade chip stocks very often, but I do know tech is hot. Like I go through like the overall, what I've been seeing. Tech is hot. AMD and NVIDIA both have been holding well and they've also ran heavy into where they're at right now. The main question that I would ask for you guys is where is the volume going to hit? When is the volume going to hit? And when I say where, I'm talking about what level is it going to happen at? AMD had a nice little sell-off, but that doesn't mean the stock's not going to go higher. It was just sold off temporarily. Could it hold? It could. There could be a nice buy area around this $88 a share to $89 a share area if AMD drops more going off in the video. It's stronger than AMD. So that's when I look at the fact of, okay, if NVIDIA pushes and chip stocks all run, AMD may have to follow too. But since AMD is at a lower price compared to NVIDIA on the chart, maybe AMD is the safer move compared to risk to reward. NVIDIA is already like holding the trends for higher lows, higher highs. AMD broke down. So I'm, I look for at that point risk to reward. That's what I try and do. So going off chips, I'm not sure if they're going to keep running. But if tech stays high, I don't see why chips won't keep running as well. Uh, Coco, you said a firm. I have not looked at a firm recently. Uh, let me pull it up and see. A firm runs with Amazon usually. So as of now, it's not really doing much. We're holding support. We got a nice rising wedge going. If the market breaks out, we've seen a firm run with the market. So the question is, can it break out of this rising wedge? And if not, it's going to have the same effect. But historically, when we've had the same pattern, we've had a breakout. So the question is, will we repeat history or are we going to fade off and the market's going to follow? I don't trade a firm either, which obviously you know because we're buddies. But for the people that don't know, I don't trade a firm. I used to when it was up in like, what was it, $200 a share? 176. I was trading it back then, but recently it's been dead, slow mover. So I haven't been doing much. Uh, square. Ooh. Finance stocks took a hit, obviously, with the banks, but they're trying to make their comebacks. Square is currently, I hate when that daily thing comes up. So it's been holding support over the last year, obviously, trying to make a pull back on the upside currently hitting this resistance zone where historically it's held as support the only thing i'd focus on for square just going off zones that i just pulled up obviously i have not traded square in a long time well i keep saying square block the name got changed but i haven't traded this in a while but just going off the zones we need a break above 70 dollars a share on on block and then we need a pullback to confirm that zone can hold support after it breaks resistance. So after the flip happens from resistance to support, 
We need to see it hold that $70 a share and it will make its way back up. Just going off trends, which for me, they're kind of accurate. We're going to hit the gap fill off the trends, which will be roughly for a block around $74 to $73 a share, which is not that big of a push. But if that breaks out and tech stays hot, finance is hot, this could have one of those runs. But as of now, it's kind of just back inside this falling wedge trend right here. We kind of just broke back inside of it after that scare off we had. So if you want to focus on Square for a dip buy opportunity for calls, watch it around this area right here. Not because the trend's there, but I, I'm going to show you guys something. So just going off these trends, you can put this trend however you want. You can move it up, down to the bottom of the candle fills, whatever. Just going off the trend, I'm going to put a line like right here. Going off this hold it had, and then we pushed up back inside. So I put that line there going off the trend and that slight support that we just had. I want to make this purple and see historically if this has any correlation. So just going off of this, the main thing I see, kind of a heavy support right there. Rejection, rejection, broke above, consolidated in that area. So just going off historically, we've seen rejects and support hold at this zone. So the question would be, will this correlate in the current time frames if we pull back to that zone? Can this hold support at $63 a share? So you have a good one too, CJ. Appreciate you showing up. Does anyone have any more questions or insight they want? Just figure out to ask one more time. Any feedback you guys have for me to make this better for you? Uh, anything needs to be more clear? Should I talk slower? Like anything you guys feel can make this better. Thanks for the breakdowns, A1, as always. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you for coming. Should be a good week. No, you are great, Coco. You are great. So it doesn't look like there's any more stock questions. So I'm going to pause the recording.